Okay, so let's uh, get started and, and, and go quickly, being the last person on deck. Next slide is where we begin. Uh, we, uh, investors may have seen that we released our FY23 results uh, a week ago now, and we were very, very pleased with the outcome in, in FY23. Um, but just to recap on what we do, ActivePort is a software company. We provide software to the telecommunications industry. And when you look at this um, picture here, what we're showing is that from a standing start in FY21, when we listed where we had no telecommunications customers for our software. Today, we have 24 installed telcos across 27 countries. And we have a contracted target uh, install base of 65 telcos. And what the telcos do with our product is use it for what we call orchestration. Our software lives in a, in a segment of the software industry called orchestration. And by that, we mean the telcos use our product to connect their users across their network to the cloud. And it's our software that presents that interface branded under the telco's brand to the telco's users to let them do that orchestration of, of connectivity from the edge to the cloud. If we look at the potential revenue from the 65 telcos that we have today, it's, it's $2.1 billion, which is a significant opportunity for us to scale the business up and convert that, that, that potential to cash. And, and that when we've been very successful in doing that over the last 12 months, and we will continue to do that. Um, next slide. And so if I dig into the figures for FY23, uh, we're very proud of the result. We went from $14 million in FY22 to $20 million in FY23. Uh, most importantly are two things. We uh, had a zero cash burn for the year. And, and so we hope that we will continue that trajectory and, and be cash positive in FY24. Uh, and also importantly, we exited the year with $4.3 million of, of liquid assets. Uh, so cash and debt as net of liabilities and creditors. And so we were adequately funded. People would have seen that last week uh, we completed a capital raise of $2.5 million. Uh, when you look at our challenge in FY24, uh, it's not finding customers. You could almost argue we have too many of those. Uh, challenge in FY24 is scaling up the business scaling up our technical delivery capacity to be able to take advantage of that install base that we've built up in FY23. And so the capital raise that we completed in, in the last week uh, was to help us fund that growth. Next slide. If I break the revenue for the year down into the three distinct parts of the business, the left two columns, ActivePort Software and Global Edge, is our software-driven part of the business. Uh, active port software is the software licensing that we generate from our telco user base and all of the other users uh, we direct to our global edge network as a service portal that we launched in June uh, this year. And so the, the left two columns are our software driven part of the business. The right hand column managed services is what we started out with in FY21. And you can see now that the, 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 the gross revenue from the software part of the business, so Active Port Software and Global Edge, exceeds the revenue that we generate from our managed services business. And that's exactly what we wanted, wanted to achieve from the outset at IPO uh, back in October of uh, 2021. Next slide. If I drill down into the software business, uh, we're, we're very excited about this result. We went from $300,000 of software revenue when we listed uh, in FY21. We've grown that to $8.3 million of software revenue in FY23, which is a substantial growth rate. It's, it's, it's almost a 1,000% growth rate in our software business. What's more important, though, is that that part of the business is profitable. We generated EBITDA of $2.9 million on that $8.2 million of, of revenue. Um, you can see on the right-hand column that our gross margin in that revenue was 64%. The, the great thing about investing in a software company is that as our revenue grows and the recurring base compounds underneath uh, uh, beneath this revenue, that gross margin number should ex increase significantly from 64% up into the mid and high 80% range. Uh, because we are a software company, we don't carry an OPEX and CAPEX overhead of, say, a network provider a lot of our license revenue drops straight to the bottom bottom line. And so it's a highly profitable part of our business. Uh, you will see there that our headcount in the software business is only 19. 
So for the $8 million of revenue across three major customers, and each customer in the software business uh, on the telco side is generating approximately $3 million of revenue, revenue per year for us, uh, we delivered that and the 24 installed telcos with just 19 people. And so we really are focused at the moment on scaling our technical capacity up so that we can take advantage of the customers that we already have. Uh, next slide. Our Global Edge Networks as a Service Portal uh, is a self-service portal users can uh, log into and create their own networks, their own SD-WAN networks. Um, the most well-known self-service network portal on the ASX today is probably Megaport. Uh, and with Infratil's purchase of Console Connect, probably the second most famous would be Console Connect. Uh, we like to think of our Global Edge Networks as a service product as a megaport for the edge. And so the distinction between what a user can do with our Global Edge product and what a user could do with, say, Megaport's product is that Global Edge focuses on connecting users from their branch office or mobile workers or plant equipment or factories, whatever, whatever the facility is at the edge or the person is at the edge, connecting those users into the cloud. Whereas a Megaport product is all about connecting from data center to data center and data center to cloud. And so really this is the front end of those uh, network um, fabric providers such as Megaport, Console Connect uh, and others. Next slide. And so people ask us where we live in that ecosystem of what we call transit partners. Uh, Global Edge is our retail representation of the active port software, enables retail users to connect into those into the cloud via the transit ecosystem partners that you can see there on the left hand side. And then our active port software installed at telcos allows the telco customers to extend their networks to other parts of the globe also using those transit ecosystem partners. And so Active Port Software acts as a integration point or a facilitator of access into those transit system, uh, transit ecosystem partners. Next slide. People ask us a lot about AI. Uh, we start in Telco by installing, uh, with our partner Radiant Arc, we install GPUs router switches and compute capacity to, with our active port orchestration product installed across the top of that. So we start with telcos by installing GPUs on those telco networks. And the telcos use those GPUs for interactive, interactive streaming services like cloud gaming. Uh, but more and more, they're starting to use those GPUs for AI projects as well. And so we're perfectly positioned in the telco industry to help orchestrate, facilitate the deployment of, of AI projects onto telco networks. And we're working with a number of telcos around the world at the moment to do that. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see Dolly from Databricks is quite a popular large language model um, that telcos use for projects like interactive customer service. Uh, there are a lot of telcos that we're working with at the moment um, to leverage the GPUs that we've already installed on their networks to, to, to operate some of those software products. Next slide. And so what do people expect can expect from us in FY24? For us, it's really about scale up. In, in 2021, when we listed, it was a startup. Um, now we have a, a significant customer base with a huge opportunity to generate revenue, revenue growth. And so for us, it's about scaling up the business. And so we are focused on converting what we've already sold into revenue. Uh, we will continue to grow the recurring revenue base, especially through our Global Edge Network as a service. Uh, we're very focused on increasing our technical capacity to be able to convert more and more telcos to cash. Uh, we are working very hard on GPU orchestration for AI. And as our software revenue grows, just naturally as a software license provider, uh, we should see higher and higher margins as our uh, recurring revenue compounds over time. And that is it, Paul. Many thanks, Peter. Got a few questions here. Um, let's kick off. Uh, your recent results showed you know, really solid growth in, uh, in customer receipts. How much of this growth came through existing customers and how much from new customers? Uh, all of the software revenue is new customers. Uh, and so there are three major customers and a series of, of smaller customers in the uh, Global Edge product. But 
the vast majority of the revenue growth came from new telco customers. Right. And how is your revenue split so geographically? Uh, which region do you expect to see the biggest growth co uh, come from uh, going forward? Uh, we will see a lot of revenue out of India. Uh, we, we currently have all of the telcos in Indi India committed to using our product, which is fantastic. Uh, right this very minute, our team are deploying some servers to one of the largest uh, network operators on the planet in India. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see a lot of revenue out of India in the Middle East and, and India and Southeast Asia. Um, some revenue, a lot of revenue out of Africa, uh, significant growth in, in the Americas, North America and South America. Uh, and Europe is starting to to kick in as well with with the likes of Orange, um, Telecom Italia, and a few others. And so I think I think our, our, a lot of our activity is in India at the moment, just because of the the, the sheer size of the telcos. I mean, telcos like Bharti Airtel with three hundred and eighty million users on their network, uh, Reliance Geo with four hundred and seventy five million users on their network. I mean, these are in, in terms of just sheer volume, volume and scale of the deployments, um, uh, they 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 cast large shadows across telcos like Telstra with 20 million users on the network, and so uh, we see a lot of activity out of India, uh, and and then the, uh, a lot through Southeast Asia in places like Telecom Malaysia, Mauritius, Indo, M1, um, AIS, and so on, Axiata Group. It's a lot of activity in Southeast Asia for us at the moment as well. Yeah, got you. You touched on this earlier. Uh, uh, AI is obviously changing the scene rapidly. Uh, can you elaborate a bit more how AI, uh, AI has impacted uh, your business? It's really something that that if you're in the AI industry, you need GPUs, and there are only two major providers of GPUs in the world, NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, if you're a telco and you're looking for a GPU and you call AMD, they'll send you to us. And so our relationship with AMD is very, very strong. Uh, we we ship more GPUs to telcos for AMD than any other pr provider in the world, uh, and so the AI and, and so those GPUs it was, it was, we we originally deployed them not for AI we deployed them for for streaming services, um, but AI is is rapidly catching up, and and if you're a telco operator and you have an AI strategy, then the natural thing you do is look for a GPU and and. In our case, most telcos have already installed our GPUs. And so it's just the natural progression for the customers to come to us and get them to help us do that. So I think AI is going to be a significant part of our revenue in FY24. Uh, and I think looking at the projects there, great projects with really good value for the telcos. So I think they'll stick and I think they'll continue to generate recurring revenue for us well into the future. Right. And... Uh... What strategy are you using to sort of lower the cost line and, and improve your margins? Uh, it's a balance between not so much lowering the cost. We're, we're certainly lowering the corporate overhead. Um, I'm not a big fan of having a large corporate overhead. I think we need to focus our resources and the capital that we have in the technical side of the business to increase delivery capacity. Um, so we're trying to keep a very low uh, corporate overhead uh, and then it's not about reducing costs in the rest of the business. It's about growing our capacity. Um, but the state of the tech industry today is that you have to grow profitably. And so, so we need to find a, a balance between growth, rapid growth, and profitability. Yeah, gotcha. And just to close up, uh, what's the status of the balance sheet? And are you comfortable that demands on funding going forward are ad adequately covered? Uh, yes, so $7 million approximately of liquidity at the moment. I think it's adequate. Uh, I think we've got um, the right balance of, of resources or, or of capital, capital available to grow the business at the pace that we need to grow uh, and remain profitable. And so we hope that um, we, we hope that the combination of the cash that we have today, uh, plus the free cash flow we can generate from our software license revenue is adequate to, to accelerate the growth of the business. We don't want to be stable. We really want to see that exponential ramp up of software revenue because with that comes fantastic free cash flow. Gotcha. Peter, uh, absolute pleasure. Absolutely fascinating uh, uh, story. And uh, again, we'd love to get you back uh, towards the end of the year to see, uh, see things, how things are traveling. So thanks again for presenting today. Perfect. Thank you, Paul. Have a great weekend.